Derby this Saturday. They call it the biggest party of the summer. Of course, they probably haven't been to a couple of the parties down here in the ATX. It is WWE SummerSlam coming to us from Ford Field in Detroit, home of the Lions. And to help me break it all down, joining me on the hotline, he is the man behind the Mid-Atlantic Championship Podcast, Big Audio Nightmare, the wrestling news, and you hear him weekdays on Wrestling Observer Live with Brian Alvarez. I'll say it. I say it every time, but it's the truth. He is the voice of reason for that very fine program. It is Mike Sempervivi. Mike, how you doing, bud? Stu, I cannot complain too much. I'm glad you had me on. I got a big announcement to make. We are turning Ooh. this into an SMU podcast. We're all joining up with Pack <laughs> 9 and we're going to have a grand old time here in SMU. This yeah, SMU baby. I mean, there's nothing more natural than an Oregon State SMU matchup. Let's go, oh, baby. Man. Gymnastics, let's do this. I I'm trying to think. I I think I've been on SMU's campus once. Uh, I, we were right next to it for a radio remote once. I know that, but man, that's, that's a, that's a big one. So hey, man, they, look, their donors apparently still think that they're in the eighties and they, they are trying here. The boy, they're trying to get hooked up with something, get something going on here. Aren't they? They really are. <laughs> they really are. I actually, so I got to, I, you know, one time worked with Chip Brown, who was one of the guys that, you know, he was part of that, you know, that broke the story way back you know that got him the death penalty so uh before we get to SummerSlam, so nxt had the great american bash about 15 minutes from me at the atb center at cedar park uh, i was i was you know uh privileged to be there uh overall it was a good show it was it was a fun show a couple things first of all tony d'angelo and stacks win the tag titles off of gallus and that I think that was just the logical next step for that storyline, right? I think so. Absolutely. There wasn't a whole lot of logic in the storyline if you really, you know, sat and thought about all of the ridiculousness on how they got there. But I mean, I thought it was a good match. I like, you know, I think Channing Stacks Lorenzo has come around a lot. I think D'Angelo is a I don't know how blue of a chip he is because he seems to have some, he gets nicked up here and there, but as far as, you know, guys and girls who have picked this thing up right from Jump Street, boy, Tony D'Angelo has, and he, he seems to keep ascending, whereas, and I'm sure we're going to get to it, Tiffany Stratton is probably leveled out for the time being, but I think that was a good way to go. I like Gallus a lot as a team and as an act there, so... I thought, and look, D'Angelo, I thought was, you know, you like this show probably a little bit more than I did. I thought D'Angelo was the smartest guy there because he said, let us get our match out of the way, way early. And that's what he did. They won. And hopefully they left until the main event. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> now, the thing I want to touch on. So we had Gable Stevenson taking on Baron Corbin. And this was straight out of Bizarro World. This had to be the weirdest uh, debut. Gable Stevens comes out and they play the video. They play the intro video, NCAA champion, Olympic gold medalist, all that good stuff. And they finally play his music. He comes out. And the reaction, I mean, I don't know if it came. I'm, I assume it came across on the broadcast. The reaction was very mixed. And when Corbin comes out and look, you know, Corbin's been, been one of, you know, WWE's best heels just by being him, he comes out and I could swear I'm hearing cheers. And as the match goes on, the, the booze for Steveson are getting louder and the cheers for Corbin are getting louder. And then, and then after everything, he ends in a double count out, which didn't help things at all. It, but it was, it was the most bizarre thing I was watching 
And, and again, I'm sitting there, I'm in the arena. Give me your, what did you think about the reaction? And am I far off in saying Gable Stevenson needs more seasoning? Oh, she, oh, whoa. Yeah, or is that is that a nice way to put it? How many herbs and spices can we put on this man? I mean, we got to throw him in a bag with as much shake and bake as possible and after, dump him out, roll him in some milk, and flour him up again, and let's go because that was not good at all. And somebody – and I'm paraphrasing it here. Somebody kind of told me, he's like, you know, it's like they're trying to teach him and teach him a lesson at the same time out there. I think Gable Stevenson needs to go back to college, pick up that next NCAA championship. I think he needs to go back into the Olympics, and I think he needs to do that. And I'm sure NBC Universal. And Xfinity would love him to do that since they have the rights. And if I'm WWE, I think that's how I'd like to do it is because he's a big star in that other realm. And I think you can take as much advantage of that as possible. I don't think you're going to make your money back off of him. But guess what? I don't think you're going to make your money back off of him in the ring. And he cannot do both right now maybe he's been able to be a lot more advanced than some other people trying to do wrestling training and collegiate training and high level and doing mixed martial arts training uh apparently he has dabbled in that a little bit but professional wrestling for this man seems like it needs to be a completely isolated deal where this is where all of his mind power is going because unlike his brother he does not have a natural charisma to him that has shown so far and i think the match showed why you go on the road and you get a lot of experience basically so you know where you are in your environment and you know how to deal with it and he could not he knew how to throw a suplex we all knew that about him i think this was a big mistake i think it was a mistake going into it i think it was a bigger mistake now in hindsight you had him messing with his brother a little bit who's now messing with drew gulak and charlie dempsey why did you not have baron corbin manipulate drew gulak do something bring him in there because if you're gonna debut gable stevenson like that have him throw gulak around for two minutes get the pin and let that be that and i don't know why they decided to go with baron corbin doing his whole reinvigoration of who he is and what he's doing i don't think it helped him at all i think it was a big mistake now as far as the fans go Get used to it because there are going to be people that do not let aspects of his past go. And that's obviously the what he wasn't even charged for, but the accusation of sexual impropriety and the deal up in Minnesota that if you watch, look, if you watch, I don't know, you've got the Big Ten Network down there, right? I don't, oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So they've done several features, you know, chronicling Stevenson's run, you know, into the NCAAs and all that stuff. You saw him at the Olympics. And I'm not saying that it wasn't brought up at all, but it's not really brought up and it's not going to be brought up. But wrestling fans, especially those online, those who are the smartest who, again, I'm not making any judgment on this. If you have made up your mind on Gable Stevenson, a wrestling fan, if they've made up their mind on anything, they're going to let you know about it, especially online. And I think... That's going to be a big problem for Gable Stevenson, and it's going to be a problem for WWE moving forward. Sure, at WrestleMania, you didn't see that happen with him when he showed up there. You didn't have some of that stuff. But, again, especially if you're not going to be good, you know, unfortunately, and I know that shouldn't have any deal with it, but he's not going to make people forget about anything with his wrestling ability, at least right now. So I thought this was a bad deal all the way around, and I got to be honest, I don't even necessarily want to see him in the professional wrestling ranks. I would almost, I would, again, sponsor him the way they throw NIL money. Look what they threw at the, the Cavender sisters, for heaven's sakes. You can, 
you can do what you did with Mark Henry in weightlifting. You can do what Vern Gagne did, you know, for years with many a person, you know, coming out of Jay Robinson up there at Minnesota and those kids and all that. So, like, you, there's – you can do that, and hopefully you can get some more people like the Tony D'Angelo's of the world, you know, who came out of Buffalo and who ended up being, you know, Joe Ariola, who ended up becoming a fine wrestler So from what we've seen so far, and do that as opposed to what they're doing with Gable Stevenson. I, I just – I don't know. I was really blown away on how bad that went all the way around, all the way around. I would say that was that was definitely the the one low point. Like I said, the rest of the show was it was it was good for what it was. It's NXT. We understand that. You got some convoluted storylines. You got crazy storylines. That's what they're doing. Hey, if that's in that if that's in in your you know that's what you like. Hey, they did it. But I would definitely say. Uh, that that one little you know 10 12 minutes that was that was something they would probably love to just take out and, and you know, like, that's why you have an nxt yeah. i guess you know that's actually why you have a level up and you have house yeah. shows so you could see you know this dark man look we got to take him out with an injury angle this ain't this angle i cut it or something like that but yeah i mean i i was really maybe and maybe that was the point as well too maybe it was look we've been training this guy on the low for two years you know we may lose him for another two w what do we got here and give him to baron who's a big guy who can you know thump around with him and and take the the big guy shots and all that do all that sort of stuff and it just <laughs> yeah i and it and you know you it makes you wonder maybe this maybe this is why they held him, you know, they, they kept him away from the ring for so long. They, do you remember all the banter and the talk about mm -hmm. he's not picking things up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, and again, maybe I missed something along the line, but it was almost like, okay, now he's getting it. It, it was. was it, it was. Or is it because somebody ordered, you need to make this dude get it, or what are we doing here? Right. It was all of a sudden, it was, you know, started with that NXT underground deal with Eddie Thorpe and, and, and all of a sudden we're starting to see him some more and he makes his quote decision, which that was, that, that was, a, that was a waste of airtime anyway. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I, I'm with you. I hope he goes to Paris next year, defends that gold medal. Maybe he can go back to Minnesota, defend his NCAA title. Uh, we'll see what happens with Gable Stevenson. All right, let's talk SummerSlam again this Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central on Peacock from Ford Field, the home of the Lions. Uh, the one match that isn't on the card that we thought was going to be on the card, Becky Lynch, Trish Stratus, they make, they make the announcement on Monday Night Raw that it's actually going to happen in two weeks on raw when he, when they're in Winnipeg. Um, I don't know. I, I've tried to find anything that tells me why they decided to not have that on the SummerSlam card. I can't find anything other than maybe they just want to keep it at eight matches. Uh, what do you think? Have you heard anything? Just give me your thoughts on this match. You know, we're wait we're gonna wait two weeks for it. Well, there's been some, you know, talk about both Becky and Lynch being a little banged up, but I, you know, again, I can't confirm that. Obviously, we know what Trisha's nose, but I don't think that that's an issue. I mean, the way they played that up on TV on Monday night, I I wouldn't think that would be the case. And I'm and I I, I look at that the card and it's like hopefully it's just for time purposes because you got to figure with the entrances and all of the video packages and Gaga that goes with it reigns and Jey Uso's an hour. I mean, I think you can put that in the last hour and be, they're going to take pretty much all of it. I'd like to give Rousey and Baszler time, even though it's an MMA match. And in theory, you know, you, you, that would be something that could end in three and a half minutes, but I don't think that's going to be the case. And I got to be honest, I'm not a big Ronda Rousey fan when it comes to professional wrestling, but I am a Shayna Baszler fan. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see some good time and some grappling put in. Same thing with Gunther and Drew. 
I mean, so th- for me, you already have Ronda and Shayna. You got the women's title match from SmackDown, which the build has been bad for, but you look at the talent that's in there and you go, again, you know, maybe it could be bad, but I don't know how, you know. So I, I think I'm hoping this is just coming down to time. And maybe an idea that that popped up even more than an injury that caused this or something like that, where, hey, we can go ahead, hold this off. Trish will be back in Canada again. And maybe we have some sort of deal there where, you know, that we find out what the reason is that this thing's been put off for two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, Looking at the two world title matches, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, uh, Roman Reigns, Jey Uso, and Tribal Combat, which apparently is a no holds bar match. Um, Ro- you know, I don't. I'm pretty sure Roman's keeping the title. Seth Finn, however, it feels like they want they want to put they want Judgment Day to be the next Bloodline storyline, and they want to do everything with them. So it feels like Finn may come out of there with that world title. Yeah, I think now's the time. You know, I I really do for, you know, one, there's been, you know, again, banter about Seth's back and how banged up he is. Could he use a little bit of time off? Same thing like, you know, Kevin Owens, obviously with his rib that he was working on. Now it got to the point where, okay, he needs a little bit of time off. So this would be the time to do it, especially when Damien Priest has got the Money in the Bank briefcase. Rhea Ripley is the most popular thing you have on that brand that's not named, you know, Cody or or Brock. I, I think, you know, more than anybody, she's the biggest star on that roster. And then you have, obviously, Dirty Dom, who's doing his thing and is a great heater and, and is a perfect part of that act. So the... the the judgment day are moving numbers. That's for sure. There's interest in them. It is. I, I don't want to say it's just because of Rhea, because that is absolutely not true. Everybody's holding up to their end of the bargain, but you ride your hot hand and right now they are red hot. And it just, it really just doesn't make sense because again, Seth Rollins beats Finn. What do you got for him? You know, Damien's got the money in the bank briefcase. Okay. Brock's going to come back into the scene. Well, I guess he said he was the WWE champion on, on the promo on raw, but I think that was more because well, Brock just wanted to stumble through a promo and get out of there as fast as humanly possible. So it just only makes sense to me that they're good. They can do this thing here with Finn. You have Rollins looking for a rematch. You can bring in another good guy and Oh yeah. My friend Damien Priest here is looking over, you know, I got to keep looking over my shoulder at him. So, yeah, absolutely go with Finn Balor, which, again, closes out that storyline he's been talking about for so long, too, about trying to get revenge on Seth. Yeah, I think you're right. If Like I said, it just feels like, we, like I said, you know, the, the judgment day, the hot hand, like you said, um, it just feels like it wouldn't surprise me if Rollins retains, but something tells me Finn's going to do it. Roman and Jay and the bloodline storyline, while it has been fantastic, and maybe this is just me, feels like it's finally starting to peter out a little bit. I mean, because, you know, it's it, we're getting, you know, I'm, I'm fully expecting to have a solo Sokoa interference. That leads to Roman getting the win on Jay, which we've seen time and time and time and time and time again. Give me your thoughts on whether the bloodline storyline is still hot or if maybe there needs to be some sort of shake up there. It is objectively still. Well, no, I mean, it's. It... It's still hot. It's absolutely yeah. still hot, at least to the general public. That is for sure. Now, I think for a lot of hardcore fans, even if they are a fan of this, you're kind of at this point, I think there's a lot of them that are like, okay, I'm willing to continue to go along with the ride, but what pitch are you going to throw me here? Because now we're on, 
Jay and Roman too. And they've done a great job with Jay and Roman part two in this. And they have Solo out there in the distance. And in theory, if this is ending with Cody and it's ending with Brock, you still have this weird Brock thing where Paul Heyman always seems to know what Brock Lesnar is doing at all times. And I'm sure Roman still doesn't trust that relationship. So in theory, you could wheel him back into this thing. I think that would make people happy. Although you have that deal with Brock never being able to challenge again. I, you know, I I don't know, but I just don't know what the curveball is going to be. You know, I think Roman's going to win, but I wouldn't pull the trigger on Solo right now. You know, does Solo, does he do something where he causes Jay to lose and then you do Jay and Solo? That still leaves Roman out there. Do you do Roman and Jimmy? I don't know if Roman and Jimmy are going to be as good as Jay has been. Jay has been fantastic in what he's been doing, you know? So I, I don't know where they're going to go with this. I really don't, but I think it's one of those, it's at that point where, again, in your mind, if you're thinking this is Cody at WrestleMania next year, you still got a long way to go to get there. You still have the Survivor Series and WrestleMania and or uh, the Royal Rumble and all the stuff that leads into that. So this is really interesting. And I can see where a lot of people, though, again, you know, I I deal with it in the chat all the time. And I see doing Wrestling Observer Live, like those folks, a lot of those folks are done with it, you know, or never really, they could not continue on with the ride, you know, for, for this long. But again, the general public is the one who is ruling this thing. And if they keep falling hook, line, and sinker for literally anything that they're throwing out there on Friday nights for that. They're going to keep it going. And look, I don't want to also sound like I'm denigrating any of this. Look what they've been able to do over the past year and a half and how they able they skipped over Drew and they skipped over Sammy and they skipped over Cody. And it's worked. Yeah. So maybe they got a lot more, you know, in the arsenal here. But, you know, I think this is this and, and, and come next Friday, it's going to be an interesting week to see what what's in the howitzer that they're going to be, you know, chucking out there. Right. And that's and that's the thing. I'm not saying, you know, it's I wouldn't say it's done yet and, and they need they need to change it now. But I guess it, it's just a matter of I guess the matter of it being such a long storyline and, and they've done a masterful job with it. Um, I think there, there's also the thought of, okay, Roman gets past Jay, maybe again, maybe he faces Jimmy in a month or two, then who's next outside of, you mentioned Cody and Brock, if Cody Rhodes is that, is that end game at WrestleMania in Philadelphia, if that's the end game, okay, you still got, like you said, you still got several months including Survivor Series, including Royal Rumble. Uh, and Roman's got to have an opponent. Uh, he's already been, he's gone through everybody. You know, who do you put up against him? It's it's going to be interesting uh, yeah. to watch. Um, speaking of Cody and Brock, we get Cody versus Brock part three. It's the rubber match. Um, and it's a wrestling match, apparently. And it's a wrestling, yes. No stipulations, no no craziness, just a straight up one on one wrestling match. Logic would dictate because Cody Rhodes is your is your top baby face that he's got to get the win so that he can keep on that path to let's go ahead and say to Roman at WrestleMania. Uh but give me the scenario where Brock goes over. Because he gets the shot at Roman. Uh, that would be the only thing I could think of. I mean, just if Brock is sticking around. And here's the thing. This doesn't have to be a three-match series. You can make it a five-match series, but you're kind of in the same boat where, again, as much as everybody loves to see Brock Lesnar throw people and as great as Cody Rhodes is, is you know, bouncing back in the fans' eyes and being, you know, do you really want to see this extended out for another match or another two matches? I don't, you know, the way Brock killed him on raw on Monday to me, it's like, yeah, Cody's got to win this. Even if it's a banana peel where you have Brock strong, I mean, it's gotta be a banana peel where he flips up 
lands flat and Cody actually gets a clean pin and not, you know, some sort of nonsense there too. I mean, to me, that's the, that would be how, that's how I would do that. Now, uh, boy, I, I don't know. I honestly, I don't see a reason that, that Brock wins this again, unless it's to keep it going. It's ludicrous to me. Yeah. You know, there's because again, you talk about Roman doesn't have any opponents. Who does Brock have? Again, both of them have Gunther, but they're not doing that match with either one of them. So in that case, what do you got? Really, it, it, what what would you have then in that case for Brock? So to me, Cody's got to win. He can move on to almost anybody, including Finn or or somebody, or, or be messed with by the entire Judgment Day or something like that. You got a lot more options with him you know, than you do with everybody else. Well, and, and not to mention, you know, you mentioned, you know, Brock could challenge again, but, uh, I am not, I am not in favor of seeing Roman versus Brock part 47. No, no. let's, let's just, let's and here's the thing. Brock, if it's Brock is going to put Seth Rollins out on Monday, you know, say Rollins loses the title. And he, Cause you always get that after a pay-per-view sometimes where, you know, either you get the title change you expected, you know, or, or you get, you know, somebody getting laid out or something like that, you know, to change gears. If you wanted to do that, fine. And then have Brock and Seth, you know, if you have that, you know, spaced out over three months or something like that, if that's what you wanted to do. But again, even in that case, Brock's got to lose to Cody. I just, I, I don't see any way for it not to happen. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I mentioned Gunther. Gunther defending the Intercontinental title against Drew McIntyre. This feels like a, a you know, again, kind of like what we were talking with Finn and Seth. While Gunther's had a lengthy run, I don't know. May, and maybe it's just because I like Drew and I want him, I want to see gold on him. But it just feels like this has a chance of being a title change. Um, I, I guess just just give me your thoughts on the possibility of Drew McIntyre winning the IC title. I love Drew, and I would love to see him hold uh, some sort of gold. The problem is Gunther is at this point, and I go we're going by Wikipedia here, but eight days away from tying Pedro Morales's record or former record now in second place for longest IC title reign. The Honky Tonk Man at 454 days comes next. That's not all that long. So could you have Gunther go through, break that record? Because they love to do that now, especially to move anything into this newer generation. I mean, the Honky Tonk Man would be one thing. To get Pedro out of there, you know, there's a, a, a portion of the brain of that company that goes, oh, yeah, yeah, we need, you know. As soon remember they got into it with The Rock, youngest champion of all time. Then all of a sudden Brock Lesnar was the longest longest champion of all time. Then they were at odds, or then Randy Orton. They mm -hmm. they you know look. This is just again what they do. So uh, to me, Gunther breaking that record and then losing it would be the way to go. Unfortunately, in that deal, that would mean Drew takes another loss in another big match. You know, but. Unfortunately, I, again, when you have Vinci and you have uh, uh, Kaiser there, you can have an excuse. And look, after this, you could do have make Matt Riddle make the save or have him involved on Monday. And then you do Riddle and McIntyre against you know Imperium as a group, but basically against you know Vinci and and, and Kaiser. I. T to me, I I wouldn't take the belt off of Kaiser yet or off of uh, Gunther yet just because I would want him to probably break that record. And I think at that point, it's going to mean a lot more if somebody does it, whether it be, you know, I guess it wouldn't be Bobby Lashley. He's on, on SmackDown. But even if it was somebody coming back or if somebody coming up off the the – look, Ilya Dragunov didn't win that title. There was a lot of reason that – you could say he should have won that. I, I don't think he's going to be on the main roster. I think he's better off in NXT, but boy, that's a quick way to jumpstart it. Have a re, 
uh, do of their great matches in NXT and have him win the Intercontinental title at a Royal Rumble or something like that. I think that could be, or even, you know, again, even at that point, you could do Survivor Series. So I know I'm just fantasy booking out here, but the bottom line is I think that belt stays on Gunther. Yeah, I, and I'm I'm with you. I am a huge Ilya Dragunov fan. I, I think he is so cool. He's so good, and he's so tough. And so, yeah, the thought of Gunther and Ilya, say at Survivor Series, that makes me want to want to make sure I catch that one. Oh uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Uh we got you. Meant we've talked about Ronda and Shane in the MMA rules match. Uh, <laughs> That video they showed on Raw, that might be the first time I've actually enjoyed seeing Ronda Rousey in an interview spot. And for that matter, Shayna Baszler. That was, that's like the best thing they've done for those two. Why did it take them so long? I don't know why they don't do this. I mean, you see, sometimes you'll see a video package that's only on Peacock during a commercial, you know, and other people are getting their commercials or they do something like this where it's like, why can't you do this all the time? Now you give me all these dumb backstage segments and you get people looking odd because you're feeding them a bunch of stuff. And inter- I mean, to me, that was great. And that is as human as both of them have ever looked on WWE TV. They both have a stake and a claim as what you want. Again, usually you want the bad guy to have some kernel of truth, at least in their mind, as to why they're justified doing what they're doing. Here, it's like they almost threw their hands up and went, well, we want Shane to be the the, the bad guy in this deal, but we all know what you think about Ronda, so ah, we're going to leave it up to you. And who you choose to cheer for in this match that's who you got, but I thought it was great. I hope they do something with Shayna after this. She doesn't need eye makeup. She doesn't need nonsense. She doesn't need... Remember she had the vampire fangs when she first came up? I mean, she just needs to kick ass. I mean, look at the women on that roster. Asuka can kick ass. Charlotte can kick ass. Bianca can kick ass. Becky can kick ass. And You know, we're not sure about Raquel, but, I mean, she looks like she can kick some ass. We'll see what happens going forward. Rhea Ripley, obviously. Like, Mm -hmm. this is nothing against the Liv Morgans of the world. But, like, they got a bunch of, like, ass kickers. (laughs) And, I, you know, to me, I I don't know. To me, this is what I want. This this is how I want to see Shayna Baszler. You know, she is a little shorter than some of the other women. Great. Use that to her advantage. You know, she's a wrestler for Christ's sake. She's a shooter. She's a mixed martial artist. You know, there's ways to to conquer everybody here. Yes, there needs to be room in the world for the Maxine Dupree's and the, you know, the folks like that. But I really like, you know, some of the athleticism, you know, that they have in this division. I think it's going to be on display later with Oscar, Charlotte, and Bianca. I may be you know, smoking opium here, you know, to steal a Jim Cornette line. But I really, you know, I really, again, it, part of it's also because the build has been kind of whack with this thing where it's like, you know, we've seen this a lot with a lot of promotions, especially with WWE where the build sucks. But once they get in there, you may not like the finish because they're not in charge of that too. But as long as it's going from bell to bell, they're probably going to kick a whole lot of ass. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Logan Paul, Ricochet. Um, look, remember I, back in the day when going really like more viral than ever would get you put on a list and you have to go to the clinic and all that. Apparently <laughs> now this is what we want out of our wrestling matches and, and Logan Paul. Cause boy, they said that a lot, didn't they? Boy, they talked about being viral and going I'm viral. They kill each other. I mean, what more look, they've done some stuff and without hyping it up now, it's like, you're telling people like, we're going to see something insane here. I mean, if they don't deliver and I got to be honest, looking at the two of them, they're probably going to try to deliver. So I hope everybody stays healthy. Well, I mean, insane. Are they going after, are they going, you know, are we going to say the, uh, the see a recreation of will Osprey and Ricochet from G one several years ago, or, you know, I don't think so because you, you I don't think the, you, I bet you could see that mirror spot though, for sure. Well, that's possible. I mean, I get, I guess so. 
I don't know. It's it, that's going to be, and then the battle royal, which you know, I think that's just the excuse. Get a bunch of people a, a ple payday. You know, that's that is what it is. So yeah, and that may have played into you know Trish and and uh, and Becky not being on this show, or if they have a plan to do Raquel and Rhea on this show. That obviously, you know, that that's you know sideways here, and that's probably the reason that they're they're doing this. But we'll see. Because yeah. again, to have a battle royal just to have a battle royal, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's anyway. It should, should be an interesting show. WWE SummerSlam this Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central on Peacock from the Ford Field in Detroit. Uh, let's let's change gears for a bit. Talk a little AEW. Um, it, so all out or excuse me, all in is less than four weeks away. We still don't have one match. No, no. sir. No. They now they have sold all the, they've sold a bunch of tickets. That I, I don't even know what the latest number is. I know it's over 75,000. So you got 75,000 people as of right now, you know, going to Wembley Stadium in London, and we don't have one single match yet. Um, are we going to start seeing some, maybe, maybe it starts tomorrow night with dynamite 200 better. Gotta look, I, there is a, there to me is a middle ground. Yeah. I do this with Alvarez all the time. You know, this two things can be true. You know, I know doesn't make for good sports radio, you know, and stuff like that. Cause you gotta yell, scream and dig your heels in and plant your flag and all that stuff. But they've sold 75,000 tickets all the pressure is kind of off. You can be careful. You can sit back and kind of move your pieces and make sure that when the time comes, you got what you want. And the 75,000 people and the fact that you know, because it's been proven with your fan base that you can do some, you know, be in a little bit of a slump, but they're still going to probably show for the pay-per-view. And they're going to be enthused if they're there and they're going to buy it if they're at home. So you got that going for you, but and you get those people that, you know, then look at that and go, they haven't announced any matches. And I would be really nice if they announced some matches. Why that? Okay. You're right. To me, they only really need to announce one at this point because we're a month out. It's a big show. Give me a big match. Give me a title match. Give me something. Now, I don't know if Adam Cole and MJF's feud is playing into that. I pro- I'm sure that it would. But, like, if you're going to do a title match with MJF, announce it now. It doesn't have to be naming the opponent. Make sure he's there. Now that you say he's going to be there, if he doesn't have a match, pick a match. FTR against whoever. Like, give us – and to me, it's got to be a star. It's got to be one of their biggest stars. MJF, CM Punk. Adam Cole, Kenny Omega, uh, the Young Bucks, like mm-hmm. that Hangman Adam Page, that echelon, it's got to be there. But like, just give me one, just give us one. That's all you need. You got to whip everybody into a frenzy. Yes, seventy-five thousand people have bought this show. There's also roundabouts. Oh, what one point five million people that watch SmackDown that don't watch you on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. you're not going to get all those people. You're not even going to get some of them, but you got to make it seem like this is where as much as you hate the Don Kings and the Bob Arams and the Dana Whites and the Vince McMahons and the people who are the best promoters who you just want to punch in the face a lot because you don't know and you want to punch them twice because you want to make sure that each side of their face that they're talking out of, you cover that. Yeah. And kick them in the butt, too, because they're probably talking out of their rear as well. But they're also the best at, again, firing people up and putting you into this whipped up into this frenzy about this is the biggest AEW show of all time. And where have you been? We got this match that we're going to. And just that's the reason why, to me, it's not about we need to have a card because. No, actually, you don't. Like this is the time in the next three weeks that you could get it cranking, but like two to three weeks ago, that's when I would have announced this match, whatever it's going to be a title match, a defense, a something here. I mean, something. And I don't know why 
I don't know why a lot of this process when it comes to this show has been shrouded in some secrecy and has been as slow to unfold as it has. Maybe we'll, again, maybe this is just, this is the way, and obviously this is the way they want it to go, but it is interesting. It, to me, it's very, very interesting, but, you know, they had a lot of stuff, and Tony doesn't want to announce anything before Blood and Guts, is, and I get that, I respect that, because you don't want to show any hands or anything, but, okay, now that we're three weeks out, let's, you know, let's get to shaking on this. You're right. And, and, and there's got to be something to the notion of, okay, yeah, you've sold 75000 for this show. Uh, but you still got, I mean, you still need to put on a quality pay-per-view so that you can sell 75000 again if you decide to do it again. Or if you decide to do it, you know, it, not, it, it doesn't have to be in Wembley. It could be anywhere. You're trying to sell... Another, what, what are the average? 140 roundabouts for pay-per-views, mm -hmm. 150, 160, whatever it is. You're trying to do that again two weeks later. Yeah. Like two weeks later, you're trying to separate people from the money you get on that one too. Like this is, they got a lot of, they got a lot of pressure on them for the amount of money. And again, I'm not crying for them. Nobody is when it comes to the dollar because they have it. But when you think about the production costs and yes, WBD is helping them out with a lot of this stuff. All that's true and all that, but. Like, I mean, you want to make sure that everybody is whipped into a frenzy leading into All In. They're still in a frenzy coming out of All In, and you keep that momentum going on TV leading in to what is going to be another traditional pay-per-view that you're going to want to separate people from their money from at a time where people are going back to school. The economy is not good. That's – I people, when you hear them talk – a lot of people, a lot of folks, when you hear them talk in the wrestling world, they're in a real bubble financially because a lot of the folks that have the most time to do this type of deal, not for a living, they have it. So they're looking at things a little differently. I can talk to Brian Alvarez and know this is a guy that's been doing it for a long time, mm -hmm. but he's at a different level here where I, does he really comprehend what's going on in a Jackson, Tennessee or a this. No, he doesn't. I, I don't believe that he does. And I don't, I, I see it almost every time he gets taught that people do not factor in how broke a lot of people are. And if they're again, not even broke as much as they don't have disposable income. When everybody had the Joe money, when everybody was getting rebates and stuff like that, it was a lot easier. It did spark a lot of economy. People were going to shows and traveling and stuff like that. Man, that's not easy anymore. Then you're going into school. Then you're going into the last quarter of the year. Look at everybody's air conditioning bill, you mm -hmm. know, after this. Like, it's – I really don't think that that gets talked about enough. Yeah. I really don't think that that gets factored in enough when people talk about, well, why did this not draw or that not draw – Look at the people who are some of the biggest wrestling fans. Look, why did advertisers look down at wrestling? For all the all of the, the people and the cross-section of people that you would get watching wrestling because they didn't have disposable income. And I think that, again, it's it, it, pro wrestling is the greatest thing in the world because it, it takes all types. But, again, there's not all types have money. Right. <laughs> it, it makes well, it tough. It makes may it tough. I mean, you met, you mentioned, you know, electricity bills. Look here, here in Austin, I think it, they just chronicled the whole month of July. We had one day where we were not over a hundred degrees, you know, one day of the whole month of July. So yeah, to now to ask folks to not only buy all in on pay-per-view, but then you're going to turn around seven days later, eight days later and buy all out. Yeah, that could be that could be a hundred bones. A hundred bones. Oh, by the way, WBD would like for you to get Max because the new season of Winning Time is coming up, and that There's... just went up in price for Max. And oh yeah, by the way, did your Netflix go up in price? And oh yeah, by the way, your Peacock, Peacock. Went up in price as a wrestling fan. You don't like those commercials? I don't blame you. So you kick out the extra four ninety five ninety nine right now yes. for the commercial free, and you start stacking and stacking and stacking, and it's like. Damn, 
yeah. you know, at some point, at some point, I can't go to that live show. I yeah. can't go to this. I can't do that. And that was amazing. That to me, that's when AEW ran Canada in the way that they did, and the way that they're running even Chicago in the way that they are just as a city and what they have going around there. I mean, you are asking a lot out of your big rollers. You know what I mean? And you only have X amount of those. I just, I, again, I, I, I could be looking at this wrong, but what I see every day, you know, there's haves and there's have nots and there's more have not wrestling fans out there than I think haves right now. And Again, you go into that time of the year, man, you're going to the fourth quarter holidays. What's more important? You know, do you want to buy the game and that system for your kid? Or do you, you know, again, it's it's tough. And I may be overselling it here, but I think it gets undersold a lot in when these conversations come up. No, I agree. I agree. You mentioned MJF and Adam Cole. So so they have the match on collision. FTR gets the win. But we don't see the breakup. We see a hug actually between the two. Between the two, is this Tony deciding to pivot? You know, because you would have thought the logical thing was they lose, they lose the title match. MJF turns on Adam Cole, set up the title program for All In, All Out. But and and, and you heard MJF said, "I'm going to give you a title match," and they hug still. Is this Tony pivoting on maybe MJF as a baby face or are they just delaying the inevitable? I think they're delaying the inevitable because you have such a reaction of people that want to see this team continue to me. If I'm a fan, I guess I do too, because it's fun. But as a wrestling fan with my, old man wrestling brain it's like okay i'm just plotting who's gonna turn on who and when and all that and i mean it wouldn't hurt my feelings if adam cole turns on mjf he's the dirty one of the group roderick strong's right there he you got him as somebody that can be your guy to help beat on mjf if cole steals the title from him i don't know where kyle o'reilly what his status is right now but you could add somebody else to that group. Now, the problem with that is I don't think AEW fans want to boo Cole. They will boo Cole. But then you have the Britt Baker factor into that. Do you ignore that like WWE does with Trinity or did with with Trinity, with Naomi, and with Jimmy Uso when it came to the Bloodline storyline where it's like, hey, this is the time where you just forget that they ever exist together. You know, and I guess you could do that with Britt. That that's not really, you know, usually what their MO is, you know, and how they operate. So, you know, she could turn on Jamie, be part of that faction, and they could all be crazy heels. But, you know, I think unless you're going to do that, MJF being the devil that he is, you know, it, it's interesting where, too, we don't – do you do Cole MJF at all in because MJF said he was going to give him the title shot? And then that's where either Cole does something devious or MJF does something devious to keep the belt. And then you advertise that for, for all out. You know, we did say we're going to have a world because all you got to do is say before that, well, before that, we're going to have a world championship match there too. Whoever our champion is, they're going to have to defend it twice. So then this, and then you do that back to back where I, I don't know. I don't know, but I know at some point this something's got to give. Something absolutely has to give. And if they didn't back off Roddy Strong, which they have not, you know, they're still, you know, that fuse is still lit as of right now. Because otherwise they wouldn't have did that. As, as you know, they would not have added any tension to the proceedings last week on, on, on Wednesday if, you were, if this was just going to be happy and free and we're just going to roll on with them as baby faces for a while, just, you know, hand in hand clotheslining people as they go down the street. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Um, before I let you go, CM Punk finally pulls the belt out of the bag, paints an X on it, calls himself the real world champion. And, of course, all I could think about was Ric Flair showing up on WWE programming with that big gold belt. 
Hey, look look at the 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 brains in that promotion. You know what they grew up with, and oh, a yeah. lot of it is 93, 93. They brought back Battle Bowl, the lethal lottery. None of us <laughs> like that. And then and they, they brought it back. Uh so he's gonna he's going to defend his world title against Ricky Starks. Uh where do you see this going? Because you gotta imagine eventually. Assuming MJF retains, it's got to head towards Punk versus MJF at some point or whoever the world champion is. And that's why I wouldn't want to see that belt come off of MJF. That's another reason to me as a heel where, no, damn it, this is the most important thing to me. And oh, by the way, but the thing is too, I guess with CM Punk, he's CM Punk's going to get booed nine times out of 10 against MJF. And that's fine. That's exactly the way he would probably want it to be, you know, to be honest with you. So uh, that's also really interesting. You know, Ricky, people don't want to boo Ricky Starks. And I know it was kind of set up on Dynamite where it seems like he's the real heel in this. But then again, you just don't know how people are going to respond to CM Punk on any given night. And he and Max have an incredible amount of dexterity as far as, you know, with MJ with with CM Punk's experience in dealing with crowds and with MJF's just natural ability to know exactly where he's at and, and what to say to to move a needle this way or that. You know, they're the, the two best that you would want to have out there in the mix. And I'd like to see MJF hold on to the title for that reason. I like, you know, this storyline coming together with the two champions. I know people that are tired of punk or hate punk or all that. They don't want to see him in this mix at all. To me, this is the most interesting thing they can do by leaps and bounds with the two most interesting people that they have on the entire roster. That's not to throw shade at Omega or Paige or anybody. It's just right now, time and place, this is where they're at, you know? If yeah. you said, who's the avatar for that promotion? Hangman Page. They could lose Punk tomorrow. They could lose the Bucks. They could lose Omega. You never, ever, that that company never wants to lose Britt Baker, and they never want to lose Hangman Page because, especially Page, he's the embodiment of that promotion. He is the spiritual tie to every newer wrestling fan. Remember, you know, Millennium, the – you know, the anxious millennial cowboy thing, you know, that he is everything to that company, you know, so I'm not throwing shade at them, but ratings indicate it, buzz indicates it, talk, whether it's good or bad indicates it that, you know, people are screaming when it's MJF and it's CM Punk. You're absolutely right. He is Mike Sempervivi. Catch him on the Big Audio Nightmare on the mid Atlantic Championship Podcast. By the way, Mike, I know you got Patreon. On that, plug your stuff. A big audio nightmare, wrestling news, hey. New Atlantic Championship podcast. Plug it, plug it all. You know, I got all these shows because, as everybody knows, with me doing these spots, I like to talk and I like to talk about wrestling. And that's what I love to do. And every single day I do it with Brian Alvarez, at least Monday through Friday. That's when we, we were seven days a week at one point. It was it was pure hell. But Monday through Friday, right now, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Easiest way to find the show on the TuneIn app, Sports Byline USA. Easiest way to go about doing that there. Run the gamut of everything that's taking place in professional wrestling, what's happening during the day. But you can start your day with the wrestling news and no rumors, no conjecture, no nonsense, just results in news that you need to know from around the world of professional wrestling as you were sleeping, as you were trying to avoid watching NXT, whatever it is that kept you away we will fill you in on everything that happens between five and 15 minutes. We'll tie you up for a long time, make it part of your morning commute, make it part of your lunch. When you take a break, whatever it is, you find that at the wrestling news.com wrestling news, AV on Facebook and Twitter. Easiest way to find it there. I also do the mid Atlantic championship podcast. If you're a fan of old school professional wrestling, you're just like a good story. I go through and go right now. I'm doing all of the Mid-Atlantic Championship wrestlings that are up on the network right now. We've done 82. We're in 83. About to go into the final conflict here with Sergeant Slaughter and Don Canoodle against Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood. But also, as a part of that, there is a Patreon aspect as well where 
I really do a lot of deep dives. I do a lot of heavy writing. I did a big piece on the history of tag team wrestling in the Carolinas and Jim Crockett promotions dating back to the 1940s, leading you all the way into the 1980s. There's a whole series about Wahoo McDaniel, a Patreon special that I did, a damn near four hour long podcast with a special enhanced script with a lot of extras in it. That it's available over at Mid Atlantic, uh, uh, patreon.com slash Mid Atlantic podcast. The newest show that I did for free for uh, that's up right now, midatlanticpod.com or anywhere that you find your, your favorite podcast, you can download it from there. The free edition of the show, edition number 58, covering March 5th, 1983. I don't have a Mid Atlantic Championship Wrestling copy on tape. It is not on the network. So, what I decided to do was take a look around the entire wrestling scene. And I mean, every single territory, every single outlaw that I could find that was running. And I take you around the world of wrestling because at this point in the game, in March of 1983, we are one month away, one month from Georgia Championship Wrestling getting sold from outside, from under Ole Anderson by the Briscoe Brothers, by Jim Barnett, getting sold to Vince McMahon, and that turns everything upside down. But leading into that, satellite and cable has changed everything. World class is getting bigger. Again, if you were a fan of that era or just want to learn a little bit about professional wrestling, take a listen to that show. Then sign up for the Patreon. $5 will get you in the door. You can look at the enhanced script that I have with a lot more detail and information involved. So I love this stuff. I love professional wrestling. And oh, yeah, if you're a fan of Japanese professional wrestling, G1 Climax is going on right now. Adam and Mike, Big Audio Nightmare, available for subscribers at F4WOnline.com. The longest running Japanese-based professional wrestling radio show or podcast anywhere in the universe. And if there's other universes out there in the Milky Ways, it ain't as old as what we've been doing. So, yeah, I love talking about this stuff. You know, support me if you can through the Patreon, but just always give a listen. Give me a follow on Twitter or threads or Instagram. It's all at Sempervivi. And Stu, thank you so much again. <laughs> and I love it. I, I, I have a blast every time I get to have you on. Uh, cause like you, I love talking about pro wrestling and I get to do it with you and have so much fun. Mike Sempervivi from wrestling observer live, big audio nightmare, made a championship podcast, wrestling news, Mike, I appreciate it. All the best to you. And we'll talk again soon. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs>